first thing you notice is the noise, the second the smells, the third the traffic. Bangkok comes to life on its streets, but they're block solid. This is an Asian super capital, huge and still mysterious. A city where gentle Thai Buddhism coexists with rapacious materialism, where the monarchy safeguards democracy, and where friendliness is a virtue. My first experience of Thai culture was the delicious food, and it left me hungry for more. I've come to a riverside market to meet my only contact here. She's a fellow photographer. Nim. Hey, Sorry. <laughs> Nim's the antithesis of the bullying paparazzo. Serene and gentle, she's a travel photographer for magazines like Elle. Today, she's got to take some pictures of some very special women, and we're going to be avoiding the traffic. This uncle, every time we come back here, he always here. Ah. So you kind of like, a little bit like my native somehow. <laughs> this boat is as old at his age. Did he just go 200 years old? <laughs> 200 baht, baby. <laughs> it might not be fully chock-a-block, but this is one of the world's busiest waterways. The Chow Phraya River is the hydraulic lifeline of Bangkok. It's as close as a river can get to being a motorway, but it still smells properly like a river. I'm not sure I'd risk a swim in it, though. So there's a massive river that snakes through the city. It sort of goes like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of. And it's then there are canals that come off it through the rest of the city. Yeah, canal is just like, you know, leading into the small kind of like orchard because this is the area where they can grow a lot of things, a lot of water, you know. It seems like the river's one of the few places you can come in town where you get a sense of space as well. Everything else is so crammed and hectic. I used to study around here, Kamasad University. And here, that's my favorite spot to hang, like have a drink with friends after work and always get this thing as my backdrop. I'm sorry to bring like oh, it's back to drink, go. It's... drinking and temple together. Yeah. I think drinking and religion should mix more often, personally. <laughs> There are some swimming bank robbers coming after it. Hello! Woohoo! Woohoo! Ah. Nim's going to take some pictures at a gym where they practice Muay Thai and where I reckon I'm sure to win a few bouts, even though I'm a novice and a weak thing. Muay Thai looks to me like the Thais had a good hard look at boxing and tweaked it in a ruthlessly scientific way to make it hurt much more than normal boxing. One of Bangkok's leading promoters, Priya, is striking a blow for the sisters by introducing the woman's touch. Are there a lot of female Thai boxers, uh, Muay Thai boxers? Actually, there are many female, but that uh, fight in the up country in Thailand. People still think that women should not do a very strong thing like this. They should be a housewife, they should be a teacher, something like that. So this is sort of feminism with teeth and toenails. <laughs> Nim takes some snaps, whilst I walk into what begins to feel like an ambush. It starts with the outfit. <laughs> I could be Thai. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> jab, jab, punch, yes. Jab, jab, punch, yes. That's good. So how do you kick? Uh, just slow motion. OK, your turn. Just hurts every time. Am I being, am I being a bit of a sissy? Oh, no, no. You're doing uh, great. Yeah. You're doing great. But generally, where they have a lot of fighting tends to be those countries which are quite warlike. Thai people seem to be quite calm. They don't seem to be very aggressive. Family, our country, normally people are poor, and this is one of the career to earn money. Right. So they really want their kids to be a champion. 
And the, the fighters here, they have sometimes they have sort of very crazy names, right? Oh, yes. Like it's what? Strong fight through the lips or something like that. Strong <laughs> fight through the lips. What a snappy title. Luckily, she's not in, so I have to make do with what's sure to be an easy victory over an opponent under half my age and size, who's called the Crystal Elephant. I'm really frightened of those kicks. <laughs> I can't believe I'm fighting a 16-year-old girl and getting pushed against the ropes. <laughs> Why is she doing it? The beginning is her, her friend just invite her to join, and she said that she wants to, to fight as long as she can. She could be a champion. She must be very tired. Perhaps she'd like to stop. OK, change, change the other goal. Oh, hi, Ma. OK, everyone. <laughs> Louis. Everyone at once? Yes. No. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. You want to show me? Ooh, that's quite hard. I'm sure some men would pay for this kind of treatment, but I'm worried I'm about to undergo karmic payback for all of my sexist behavior in the past. So I chicken out in manly fashion. Well, it's, you know, I didn't want to hurt anybody, did I? They're all little girls, after all, you know? I mean, I could have kicked everybody, so I would take them all on. But I just didn't want to make anybody cry. Thanks for that. My pleasure. You just wanted to see me get my ass kicked. <laughs> no, I just wanted to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. And experience something else. Buddhism is to Thailand what overeating is to the USA. It's Maga Puja Day, a festival that celebrates the Buddhist act of giving. Nims put me in touch with an old soul who will guide me through the simple intricacies of Thai Buddhism. So technically you're meant to do what, how, is it nine, nine temples in a day? How many do you...? Yeah, nine temples in a day. Because nine is a lucky number as well. And you can pick like nine sacred places, sacred temple, to, get to, to, to boost up the, the luck you know, in you. Jumbo's a Buddhist bon viveur, student, traveller and clothes designer, the perfect person to show me how to gain merit for the next life. So it seems like the religion here is still very much a part of daily life. There's not really a separation. It's a way of life. Like we have school here, for example, in the mm. temple. We have festivals, so it's like you have partying in the temple. The temple used to be the centre of everything mm. of the community in a Thai traditional lifestyle. Thai Buddhism is a mix of almost everything. Confucianism, animism, superstition, Chinese god, Hindu god. And how does it work in your life? Oh, I'm trying to bring that back more into my life to learn more about the traditional values. According to Jumbo, this temple's home to the city's tallest standing Buddha. When you look eye to toe with these enormous enlightened feet, there's a significant humbling effect. So we like the incense there. Right. And, and, and what kind of um, thought process are we, are we meant to go through here? To be honest, the real Buddhist, when you pray to a Buddha, mm -hmm. you really pray to a Buddha in you because as a real Buddhist, we believe that the Buddhahood in, in everyone is of us. Why is there toilet roll on that tree? Maybe it's just for the use of a monk, you know, you have soap. I see. So if you that's it, basically, you've got no no income. No, yeah. So people you, you, just donate things. Maybe there'll be a PlayStation hanging here. Right? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, so. Thai Buddhists need to improve their karmic standing and their status for the next round of reincarnation. At the next temple we go to, Jumbo shows me how to make one of these karmic investments. So this, this is part of the temple here? Yeah. It's a temple here. Yeah. We've walked into a religious feeding frenzy, a magical combination of wind, light and water. Jumbo tells me the girls are giving food to the fish and birds in order to gain merit for the next life. It's a moving experience, and sort of like a crash course in being at one with nature. This is the most um, spiritual I've felt all day, actually. This, this makes perfect sense. Uh, poor fish. Our next destination was a more frightening and morbid form of merit-making. 
but one that helps humans, not animals. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. We're buying coffins. Coffin is 500 baht to donate it. Uh, it's just 500. Or well, you can make any kind of donation you want. It was a real coffin for like for, for dead bodies. These coffins here. So dead bodies are mainly those who they don't have relatives or yeah. either they're poor, so they have the coffin yeah. for the dead. Yeah. Well, you don't really want to have half <laughs> a coffin. I'm Toby. Oh, oh. Marco. Marco. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Likewise, Marco. Yeah. An English teacher by day and a volunteer at the Rum Catanu Foundation by night, Marco Cunningham's the only foreigner in a relief organisation that specialises in emergencies. What sort of, sort of fascinated me, but more than that horrified me, was if you just look here, this is like, this is what you're estimating to find on the streets of Bangkok in one evening. Is it? Uh, probably more than that, but yeah. Well, I think I'm going to go for that coffin there. Marco's not a bureaucrat, though. He has a gruesome, dangerous and noble job that takes place at night on some of the meanest streets in the world. There are no official ambulance units in Bangkok, so it's left to charities like Ram Katanyu to pick up the shortfall. One reason why Marco's base of operations is the forecourt of a gas station. Marco and his team have trained out of their own pockets to be paramedics in order to earn merit for the next life. Their specialty is corpse collection, earning them the delightful nickname Body Snatchers. Busy nights are normally uh, weekends. And, um, and also uh, if there's a full moon. Yeah. Almost full. Lunatics. Yeah. From now to 1 a.m. bars are closing mm -hmm. and people are going home. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our workers with uh, people are driving home drunk and motorcycles mainly too. So from now on, there should be something. This is where I come face to face with the gruesome reality of Bangkok traffic. Motorcycle search parties risk their own lives to report any serious accidents to the ambulance teams. What's happening, Marco? Uh, there's been a motorcycle accident uh, with a big truck, I think. And how much information have you got at the moment? Uh, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Marco attends up to 15 incidents a night, usually including at least one death. In that context, this man was lucky. It looks like there's been a motorcycle accident. You can see the uh, bikes come under here. Fortunately, he seems to be hurt. It doesn't seem to be life-threatening at the moment. And certainly, if you look around, there's no shortage of people to look after him. And no shortage of people who just want to have a look as well, of course, being a road accident. Is he going to be all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty sure it's only a facial and uh, arm injury. It's quite um, a strange experience because there's an undeniable adrenaline rush when you're weaving through the traffic with the lights flashing. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And, so on, yeah. and then you come face to face with yeah. that gruesome level yeah. of reality. It's and a, you do that several times in an evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not crazy. I don't think so. Marco's ability to stay sane and even chirpy in the face of that carnage amazed me. I went home with a new respect for him, the Buddhist approach to death and Bangkok's traffic. Spend any time in the city and you're desperate to avoid the congestion. The tuk-tuks are small and snippy, so surely they can bypass the gridlock. This is Bangkok, isn't it? Right here. 
when you see tourist images of Bangkok, you see people shooting around in tuk-tuks, getting everywhere really quickly. The reality of it is you sit in a very uncomfortable small space, breathing in traffic fumes. So I've got a feeling I'm asking a stupid question, but why, why is it called a tuk-tuk? Because it's sound. <laughs> No, no, no. That sounds like a lovely little bird. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to... Progress is often achieved at the expense of charm and character, but no one's going to miss the noise and pollution of the tuk-tuk's evil little engine. We're going to meet the man who's reinvented the three-wheeler. It's Toby. Yes, Toby. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for having us. Fantastic place you've got here. The former air marshal, Mr. Morricot, is an actual rocket scientist. He invented missiles for F-16 fighter jets, but now he's putting his mind to the gentle task of creating electric vehicles for a cleaner and quieter Bangkok. This looks like my sort of electric car. This is my teeth. So electric and wooden, ancient and modern, on four wheels. It's styling. And what are these ones over here? Uh, that these is, are like that, I'm thinking about the electric ah. look, look. Yeah. I think uh, this is a good idea for do that because keep the tile very clean and no noisy. So can we take it out on the road? Yes. No. I'll take you. I'll, can I drive? Okay. Okay. I'll need to know some uh, some Thai insults so I can play the tuk tuk driver. Smokers will feel at home in Bangkok. You can fill your lungs with noxious gases just by taking a breath. Mr. Morricot's tuk-tuks are part of the city's bid to reduce its smog while still allowing for dangerous driving. Not too fast. Not too fast? It's fast enough. It's good. Is it as fast as a normal tuk-tuk? No, it's faster. This is faster than a normal tuk-tuk? Yes. Wait, hold on. Can you, can you explain to them that we'd like to race them. 500 baht says we're faster. One, two, three. Glad you could make it. <laughs> I think that would make us the winners. Can you ask him if he would um, consider an electric tuk-tuk now that he's seen what it can do? Just the way it is, it's, it's OK already. Right. It's <laughs> good. Well done. Cheers. The winners. The next day, I visit Nim at her lovely, serene home near the centre of the city. Hey! Hey! I know! <laughs> wow. I love what you've done with the place. Yeah. Are these your pictures? Yeah, that's my photo from my first exhibition, actually. Right. Uh, what, what are these? This one is all the Buddha amulet for it? protection, for good luck. I say, those are penises. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's holy items. It's holy items. <laughs> where, where are we going now? Um, we're going to something really interesting. Mm -hmm. but should I just like not let you know now and then we no, go tell, and see? Tell me now. What? Surprise. Nim and I are heading to the Wat Bang Pra temple to witness an incredible spectacle, the annual tattoo festival. They come here to pay respect, like the big anniversary, mm. and also who doesn't have tattoo, they can come and join as well. The holy monk at this temple is like the teacher of them. And it's wow. like a religious celebration and a sort of tattoo convention at the same time. This temple is famous for its tattooing priests, and they ink up men all year round. But as this is one of the most auspicious dates on the calendar, there's a production line going on. 
So the monk over there, he's going to tattoo all of these people? Yeah, I'm not sure who wants to get tattooed. Some of them already have tattoo, but they want to get more tattoo for the different reason to protect themselves, like good luck. And he will just like give the tattoo that has a specific meaning for them. He's going to be here all week. I know. These are no ordinary tattoos. The air is hot, dusty, and thick with a dangerous energy. Something very weird is about to happen. get tattoo like let's say they have like snake tattoo or maybe it's monkey god tattoo or dragon or tiger when they heard the chant it's spiritual awakening so they're being possessed by the spirits of their tattoos the spirit of the tattoo that represents yeah. you know what how they cut them down they're going to rub the ears like this Okay, we catch one, we just rub his ear and then... Will you help me to do that? This is a sacred ritual, but it also feels like a rock concert. Hundreds of tattooed young men in T-shirts pumped full of testosterone, hurling themselves at the stage and being caught and returned to the crowd by other larger men. Does that sound familiar? Let's um, have a look over there, but be careful that we I don't... Um... You'll be my protector today. Yeah. You know, it's all right. If anything happens, they'll hit the crew first anyway, so it's, right. well, it's fine. <laughs> Just get out. You okay? Nim got hurt. Got hurt. They drew blood. I'm not kind of like scared. I don't want to get so close. I'm terrified of anybody creeping up on me now. <laughs> Is that a chicken or a monkey? I can't tell the difference. That guy looks like Tiger to me. I have to admit to not being entirely convinced by some of these performances. They feel like performances. Mind you, they're quite frightening. <laughs> Looks like that guy's been possessed by the spirit of a dragon. Nim suffered enough for the day, but apparently I haven't. She's volunteered me to be the subject of an experiment by her friend Manit. He's an artist who's found a vivid way to point a finger at Thailand's increasing consumerism. Hi. I notice you have a pink suit. That is my part of my project. Manet's famous for his surreal photos of a pink man, a series of satirical pictures that have been exhibited all over the world, including the Venice Biennale. Pink man represents a modern people, mm. a people who have the mind occupied of consumerism. So that's why I want to make a, a comment on that. So the, the trolley is sort of the symptom of materialism exactly. and the suit is almost the cause, as yeah. it were. Yes. Pink in Thai culture, we consider as vulgar, you know. Right. Now you'd like me to, to help with the project? This, this pink suit never been wear by the Westerner, mm. so I think it would be good for you. I see. So you want me to dress up as a, as a vulgar foreigner? Yes. <laughs> Cheers. If you don't okay. mind. I, I want you to know that I don't normally undress in the company of a strange man within five minutes of meeting him. Yes. No, this is just in the name of art. <laughs> I 
just what and have no thought, no feeling, I think. Yeah. Capitalism ate my soul. Yeah, you look good. Manet's taking me to Soy Lalai Sap, an outdoor market off Ceylon Road. This is where he had his first day out with Pink Man 10 years ago, so it's rather apt that I make my ill-fitting debut here. So has it become um, a millstone at all, the Pink Man? For me, it's become uh, an icon for my work. Mm. People remember this. How do you feel? Hot. Hot. It's really, it's really liberating from my point of view to be walking around showing off, but in character. So it's like I don't have to take personal responsibility for what's happening. I'm merely a, uh, you know, a weapon in your arsenal. Look at the way how people look at you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What's that stupid farang doing? Yeah. People are pointing and laughing at me, which is not an alien sensation, but Manet seems to think it's a success, nevertheless. So that's it then? Yeah, you yeah. have to give me your everything, the every suit. stuff. Yeah. Trousers. Good luck. But uh, you don't want the trolley? It took for you. OK. OK, Thanks. see you. Bye. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Does anybody want a trolley for some trousers? Trolley for trousers. Trolley, trousers. After losing my trousers, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to lose my shirt as well by betting on Crystal Elephant. So I'm checking up on the new training regime Priya's using. She wants to awaken the killer instinct in her boxers before a big match. So you just come here to relax? Yeah. Then, really? It is good to hold your breath and know how to control your emotion. That was pretty good. Come on, we go. I'm trying to think of which television policeman I would like to be now. Thai people appear very gentle, but there's a lot going on under the surface, especially in a stressful city like Bangkok. I'm going to try gangster style. Shooting guns at military bases like this has become a popular way for locals to let off steam. I think my first one missed. Yeah, yeah. Actually, okay, wall, actually, okay, okay, you know, okay. my first one probably went yeah, through yes. that hole there because okay. it wouldn't have missed the target completely. <laughs> so what did you bring the crystal elephant here for? Just want her to know why I'm interested in here and what is the good reason for gun shooting. Concentrate meditation. Control your, em yeah, control your emotion. Frankly, but just got no money. But everybody have to be educated, and when they grow up, just just find other job if you think it is better than than to be a fighter. Actually, um, I've got some uh, good luck charms for her. That's not that my. <gasps> I got that also. Oh, he's You're just gonna the kill the opponent? Well, I'll be hiding, be hidden behind the glass. <laughs> no, just use it here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Today, Marco Cunningham, the body snatcher, and I are heading to Kanchanaburi province near the Thai Burmese border. We're going to see some monks who have adopted some tigers. Luckily, I've brought my own mortician. This is a tiger sanctuary. Yeah, apparently, it started off one tiger which was, uh, came in. Um, motherless or mother had been poached or something and then the abbot kept it and then people heard about it and other tigers came in as uh, as events happen and there's a tiger there
In line with the Buddhist belief in showing kindness to all living creatures, the abbot here has turned his forest monastery into a wildlife sanctuary that's home to 17 Indo-Chinese tigers. When poachers take adult tigers, they leave the cubs behind, and the abbot has been providing a home for them. Because I notice, like, if you look out here from, from where you're sitting, these people look almost like they're worshipping the tigers. Yeah, they come to watch it, yeah. For me, the tiger is like a son, my friend, my mom. If you believe the real carnation, yeah. when you're dead, you do the best thing you can want this animal, including the tiger. Yeah. Mm. Do you handle the big tiger? Yeah, I can lift the, the big tiger and walk around allow, allow our temple. Really? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like cats and I've always assumed that cats like me. I hope that applies to the whole species though. In my next life, I may come back as cat food. That's the tiger that we're going to be walking? Yeah. You're going to be the huge? Yeah, yes. It's you yours, Toby. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Thanks, Mother. <laughs> All of the tiger here, they are fairly. Yeah. Would you like to sit down here? Pass. Touch it. Let the two come here. Okay, that's... Another two tigers are coming. I can't believe what I just did. Come, walk here. Walk and pass them, yes. yes. Smiling, come, walk here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Please. Careful, yes. <laughs> There's a giant tiger right behind me. So what happens if you walk in front of it? They, 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 hit, they hit you while just playing. And oh. when you when you drop down, he... <laughs> like a playing with you. Yeah. They bite out the back of your neck yeah. as part of the game. Yeah. It all just seems so casual. We're just taking three tigers out for a walk. Enormous man-eaters. <laughs> <laughs> He's hitting the man-eater with a stick. Are you frightened, Barker? You face death every day. I'm going to want to be on the receiving end of... Uh my group's work. <laughs> Is this why they come to swim? You can go swim with them. Well, the water looks sort of inviting. <laughs> After you, mate. Right? How long are you? Look into the camera, please. Thank you. So, Abbott, what is going to happen to these tigers? You release them into the wild? No, if they stay like this. When they're hungry, they come to see you, see me. No good. You have to train them first. Right. If they can feed themselves, we, we, we take them to the jungle, back to the jungle. Touch it. Touch the tiger. I wish you wouldn't tell me to keep on doing that. Obviously, we weren't taking the tigers for a walk. It was really the other way round. Still, I was just relieved that I hadn't been mauled for treading on the tiger's tail. That was an honour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Was just, I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's just incredible to be in the company of an animal like that. Yeah. Oh, Thank good. you very much. Thank you. I've jacked up a friend of mine to take you out for dinner. Hello, Toby. Right? Andrew. Hi. Okay, guys, thanks, Andrew. Right. See you later. See you later. Are we in a rush? A bit. Aren't you hungry? Look out for the elephant shit right there. Oh, that really is elephant shit. Really is. <laughs> well, we're not going to be eating elephant, though. We might. Up to you, you know, whatever you like. Besides being an editor for Lifestyle and Listings Monthly, BK Magazine, Andrew Heransenboom is a roving gourmet, an expert on the best food in Bangkok, which you usually find right here on the street. Now, this is Chinatown that we're in at the moment, yeah? We are, yeah. And this street is the main street. There's tons of food around. And actually, my family used to live on this street ages and ages. Uh, all right. And so, would you come down here? You'd sort of just come down here to, like, 
walk around and we just graze. kind of graze, yeah. So you'd go for an appetizer on the hoof, as it were, uh -huh. and quite possibly have a hoof. Then the main course, you'd go for a sit down. Yeah. Durian, you like this? Durian. The king of fruits? Uh, I will try. Hold on, I can smell something. Not me. It's, it's, it's it smells like armpit. Uh, yeah, it's like a cheese and a fruit. He'll be insulted if you don't finish it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? It's like dried prawns, and it's mm. kind of a sweet syrup. In Thailand, we do a lot of sweet and savory things mm. together. Thank you. Lay on a cup of I don't think we pay for anything here. We don't have any money for that now. I keep gum. licking my gums, but I can't get the taste of that guy's nuts out of my mouth, you know. You know, it's your first time. It's really <laughs> like that. After the sidewalk buffet, it's time for the main course. My eternally expandable stomach and I are in heaven. When I'm reincarnated, I want to come back as me, eating at this restaurant. What would you say is it about Thai cooking that makes it special? I always say what makes any difference is the sauce. You mean this stuff? This stuff, yeah. And no respectable restaurant will have less than two sauces. So the concept of vegetarianism here is not a big thing? No, you'd think it'd be more for a Buddhist country, but I think that our love of food and variety outweighs that. Television can't begin to show you how delicious that was, but Andrew wants to expand my stomach even further. There's one last dish that I've got to eat. Now, this, this is the banquet that you were promising me. It is, it is. Well, I'm a bit worried that somebody might have let some bugs get onto the food. <laughs> These look like crickets, locusts, right? Yeah. Cockroaches. What do they taste like? Good. Just, yeah. like, just like fish. These I've never tried before, the locusts. Insects have long been a favorite salty snack for farmers from the north, and the girls who come from the country to work in the city's bars provide a ready market for creepy crawlies. It's going to nibble on a foot for a minute. Is there a sort of etiquette involved? Should I, should I go for the head for first or the, the thorax? Tail. Up to you. It depends on your personality. <laughs> I'm not particularly fond of this. It's locust. Mm. Still, it's about time they got some payback, isn't it? Yeah. Locusts always eating everything. Bad time, everything ate locusts. Those look like maggots. Tastes like a crisp. Oh, no. It smells like a stable. I'll eat these, but I won't eat them just plain. That's why you need this. I noticed how you got me slightly drunk before you brought me here. I can't eat this sober. <laughs> they taste fine, mostly of oil and salt. But really, when it comes down to it, I think I rather would have had a coffee. It's fight day for Crystal Elephant, so I've come to show my sympathy for her opponent. Priya brings me backstage. It's nice and quiet, isn't it? <laughs> this is the real Asmos Priya. What's happening now? They're, they're actually putting makeup on. Uh, yes. So is there a danger when you're prettifying the boxes here that people are not going to take it too seriously? No. No? It, because I think it's more attractive mm. yeah, to, the, to the audience. They say, oh, wow, cannot believe that. She looks very pretty. How can she fight? Show business. How long is the makeup going to last in the ring? Maybe two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> because the tears will come out and Blood, also. Right. blood and tears washing off your makeup. That sounds like a tough type of show business. But the winners can earn 10,000 baht, and Priya tells me this is the reason most of the girls fight. They need the money. What about the pain? It's just normal thing to be hurt. That's quite a Buddhist way of looking at it, isn't it? Crystal Elephant's opponent is a much more experienced fighter, so it should be a tough match. I think I would put my money on the Crystal Elephant. OK. Wow, 
Why are they dancing? Just like a playing and respect for the teacher. So this is just like it's like a ritualized warm up they're doing basically then. Okay. Go on, I want to see some fighting. <laughs> It's funny to see the emotions going through her as well though. She gets one in the face. She gets very angry very quickly, but then almost immediately the other girl will get knocked down. And then she gets all cocky again. In Muay Thai, punching is the weakest of all blows and kicking merely a way to soften up your opponent. Knee and elbow strikes are the key things to winning a match. Crystal Elephant's not hurting the other girl enough. With only a few moments of rest in a 15-minute bout, both fighters are exhausted. These final seconds will settle him. Okay, money now. Yeah. It's a close call, but Crystal Elephant loses on points, but she doesn't seem defeated. If I'd taken that much punishment in the ring, I'd be in floods of tears. Well, I, I still think you're a champion. You could have beaten me in there, no problem. Thank you very much. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Can I take your picture before you go? Just, just here is fine. I've had a brilliant time here, but I know there's one thing missing, and I'm not going to find it on the streets. I've invited Nim to join me on a safari for one of the rarest and most precious things in Bangkok. This is my favorite bit of Bangkok so far, though, definitely. Mine as well. It seems like people's default level of noise here mm. is so much higher than everywhere else that people who live in Bangkok don't seem to notice yeah. just how noisy it is yeah. until you manage to switch everything off. Exactly. Can we ask that man just to turn off the thing so we can drift? Mm. Shh, can you hear anything? No. <laughs> don't break the silence. Perfect. Now, you see, now Bangkok is just like the greatest place ever. Isn't this... It's just brilliant. It's so quiet. You know what? You made me discover my own place. Really? It's no noise. It's much nicer. It's wonderful. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hello, tourists! Hello, Japanese tourists! Sayonara! It looks like a really painful dance. Until it gets you in the kidneys. Yeah. So if I kick you... No, oh, one kick like this. I'll have to kick her. Oh, I see. Oh. Oh. I'm never going to say that girls can't fight again. <laughs> <laughs>